So D, why we are doing testing is nothing but, you know, in order to find out the issues on the applications. All right, in order to find out the issues on the application or defects on the applications or bugs on the applications. What are the So why we are doing testing means to find out the issues on the applications. If you are finding issues on the application means, it's automatically we are improving the quality of an application. So ultimately why we are doing the testing means to find out the issues as well as to improve the quality of an application. That is the reason we are doing testing. So in this software development life cycle process, so we have a one phase testing. So testing is nothing but to find out the issues and to improve the quality of an application. To do the testing in the market, as for the market standards team, we have two ways. One is manual testing and the other one is automation testing. So, what is manual testing and what is automation testing? I can say directly, you know, so before saying this manual testing and the automation testing, so team, do you have any, you know, so Jasmine, you have worked for the manual testing here, right? Just tell me your roles and responsibilities. I'm sorry, tell, tell you what? Tell me your roles and responsibilities, what you are going to do every day. You know, as a functional test engineer, what are the roles and responsibilities? Oh, what are the functionalities? No, no, no. I'm asking what are your roles and responsibilities. Responsibilities. Oh, so yes. to it's to cre uh, create the high-level scenarios. Uh, so you're going to create high-level scenarios. High-level scenarios. Yeah. Then, like okay. functional uh, to write functional test cases. Execute those functional test cases. Okay. Uh, That's it. You have any other stuff? You have any other stuff? Like log defects, uh, okay. re-executed, uh, okay. validate once it's okay. once it's ready. And okay, I understand this. Fine. So basically, you know, the first step. For every test engineering, step one means we are getting the requirement from the clients or we are getting the requirement from the product owners, we are getting the requirement from the business analysts. It will depend on the process, it will depend on the company. So step one, what we have to do is, whenever we get the requirement from the clients, the first step is we need to analyze the requirement functionality. Right? Just one is it clear? Yes. Right? So without knowing these requirements, we can't be able to prepare the functional test cases, right? So if you want this functional, if you want to prepare the functional test cases, the precondition is you should have a strong level of skills in the requirements. What exactly the requirement does? Then only can be able to prepare the you know first year and a two test case for that specific requirement. Right? So here requirement understanding is very, very important. Okay, so requirement analysis phase is the first step for every test in here. Okay? So step one of the test engineers and step one of roles and responsibilities of the test engineer is to we need to understand the requirement functionality. Because if you understand the requirement functionality, then you have come to know okay, this is your expected result. So this requirement has correct. So if you use this, you know, developers are design some code on this specific requirement, it should be do something. Right? So that is your expected result. If you analyze the requirement functionality, then only you come to know what exactly this requirement does. Without knowing requirement knowledge, without you know having any requirement knowledge, we can't be able to prepare any test cases, we can't be able to do the test cases now. So here requirement knowledge is very, very important. That means requirement understanding is very, very important. Once the requirement functionality is there, if you are unable to find any gaps on the requirement, then we go with the preparing of test cases. Is it clear, Jasmine? Yes. Right? So step one is analyzing the requirement and step two is prepare the test cases. So whenever we are preparing the test cases, parallelly development team or that design their code. Right. So they want to be designed their code. Once the code is deployed into a large so step one is analyzing the spell I'm getting it over. So I'm just indicating you all, please use headsets. 
The second one is understand the requirement functionality. So once the requirement functionality is clear, then we generally start with the test cases. Whenever we prepare the test cases, parallelly development team is developing the code. So once the code is completed, parallelly you know our test case determination also completed. So whenever the build, that means whenever the developers are given the release or whenever the code is deployed into in our PA environment, what we need to do is we need to execute the test cases whatever we prepared earlier. So one step one, understand the requirement functionality. Step two, prepare the test cases based on the requirement functionality. Step three, whatever the test cases you prepared, once you get the release from the development team, you have to execute the test cases. Okay. So here important point is whenever we are understanding the requirement functionality, we will come to know the expected result. We will come to know the expected result what exactly this requirement does. Right. Fine. Jasmine, uh, can you tell me the test case body? So how are you going to be design the test cases? So what is the test case body? What are the that means you know test case template I am asking that. How are you going to be design the test case? It has case? like uh, yeah it has like test case name, uh, requirement yeah. number, uh, test case description, mm -hmm. uh, test case state, uh, expected result, actual result. Yes. That's what I'm expecting. Fine. Okay. Normal, usually, the uh, test case template contains obviously test case ID, precondition, test case description, mm -hmm. test steps, test data, expected result, actual result, status. Right. So these are the common steps for you know. These are the common problems for test cases. Or agree or not? Yeah. Right. So once you understand the requirement functionality, you're going to be start the test cases. You're going to be you know write the test cases up to expected result. You don't want you know write actual result. Whenever you prepare the test cases, just you documented only expected result, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Once getting the release of the development team, you have to execute the test cases. While executing the test cases, you are getting something result that is known as actual result, right? Application gives the result; it is known as the actual result. Once we understand the requirement functionality, we are getting something that is known as expected result. Mm. Right. So in the execution phase, what we going to do is in the execution phase, we are executing the test cases. While executing the test cases, we are observing the expected result and actual result. We are comparing expect and result and actual result. If both are same, the given set of test cases is passed. Both are not same. The given test cases are failed. Right? Yeah. So whenever the test case is failed, simply what we going to do? We going to be simply log the bar to the specific developer. We can also simply assign the bug, right? Yeah. So whenever the bug is posted, it is probably an open status. Once the developer is fixed, so he gives the fixed status and you know he gives the status as a result. Whenever the bug is fixed or whenever the bug is resolved, we are going to be do the retesting on the specific bug. Okay. So retesting means. So this is expected iterative question D. So what is the difference between what are the differences between retesting and regression testing? I think the expected question is the manual testing. It's not only manual testing; it's the expected question for test engineer. So retesting means whenever the be bug, whenever the be posted a bug, if the bug is fixed, we are going to do the same steps, same producible steps we are executing on the specific requirement. We are going to pass multiple sets of data. Right? This is known as retesting. So while doing the retesting, if the bug is still exists, we are going to reopen the bug and send it to the again scheduling development team. If the bug is not reopened, if the bug is you know working as expected, we are going to simply close the bug. So this is what our you know roles and responsibilities. Once our test cases you know test cases completed, test case execution is completed, we log the bug, number of bugs are. Fixed. We complete our retesting also. Then we send a status. You know, these are the test cases I have executed. These are the test case coverage. These are the past you know, number of test cases are passed. And number of test cases are failed. So here, very very important thing is when will you start testing? When will you stop testing? I'll discuss those topics in the coming section. But you know, so what I'm discussing here is I'm discussing just roles and responsibilities of test engineer. So roles and responsibilities of test engineer is. The first step is understand the requirement functionality. Once you understand, once you clearly have an requirement knowledge, probably you're going to be prepared the you know valid test cases for the application. 
once escape design is completed, we are getting the release from the development team. Whenever we get the release from the development team, we are going to be exploring the test cases. While excluding the test cases, here we are doing expected results and actual results. We are doing that expected results and actual results. If both are same, give, we give a set of the test cases pass. If both are not same, we give a set of the test cases fail and immediately we are going to be open the path and send it to the specific developer. Once the bug is fixed, we have to involve in the retesting. In the retesting, the bug is still exist, the bug is still reproducing. We are going to reopen the path and send it to the specific developer. If the bug is not at this, we simply close the path. Yes. So uh, this is what you know what we are doing as in the manual testing here. So I can directly say what is the manual testing means excluding the test cases by manually. Okay, so excluding the test cases by manually is nothing but manual testing. Okay, you can say directly you know there is no definition for the manual testing. You don't need to worry about what exactly manual testing can mean. You can simply say exclude the test cases and all the stuff. So what is automation testing? So automation testing means excluding the test cases by using one third party tool or by using some you know automation tool is nothing but automation testing. So excluding test cases with the help of third party automation, third party tool or you know any automation tool is nothing but automation testing. Okay, so team, if I have any questions, you know, just feel free to ask me. Don't worry about that. Okay, so fine. This is a no no. This is you know, this one is between man, but it, uh, no. Uh, this is what exactly we are doing. The rules and responsibilities of testing here. Okay, here my question and very very important question is, you can just tell me as per your knowledge. So, what are the products of manual testing? Why we are going for automation testing? Just when, 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 when it's like it's when you have a, when you have a more data and like thousands of accounts and all those things to test, uh, mm -hmm. you need automation to okay. you can verify or validate the all the records rather than you manually. Mm -hmm. uh, manual tester, is, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. I'm able to hear you. Yeah, manual tester takes time, like in yeah. order to reduce time also uh, automation is necessary sometimes. Okay. Is this the only one point we have for drawbacks of manual testing? Uh, no, like when you have a, when you have a bunch of data which uh, you need you need more resources. Uh, okay. While with automation you, you can do it uh, very quickly. Okay, so you are saying that the first product of manual testing is a time consuming process and second, you know, second product of manual testing is for manual testing you need number of resources required, right? Yeah. Do you have any other drawbacks apart from these? Mm. Okay, no worries. Okay. These are the valid points. I agree. Uh, these are the valid points. One the another one point is like uh, uh, there are more chances in as a human being you, you you might miss small minor details which through automation you can because once you once you started executing same thing again and again there are more chances that you miss minor thing while in automation you can catch that part. So you're asking that it's not reliable, right? You're saying that it's not reliable, right? Yeah, uh, not not every time. No, not not reliable, but like it's if I'm if I'm doing same thing, same, same work. Yes, I understand. If you're doing repeatedly, you know, one task, probably you're getting boring. So you might miss some test data. Yeah, like, some minor. Yeah, so I understand that. Okay. So fine. These are the valid reasons. I know uh, Sanket and uh, just me. I appreciate it. But you know, if you are in the interview, probably the expected person for the manual testing or the drivers of manual testing, if you are saying like this, they will not be satisfied. I am sure they will not be satisfied. Because you know, I have a couple of years of experience in the industry, even I am also doing the interviews. You know, if there is anybody discuss like you know what are the drawbacks of manual testing, I will not be happy with that answer. So directly saying that. The major drawback of manual testing is do you know the regression testing team? Yes. 
So what is mean by regression testing? Uh, yes. When bug is fa fixed, we test again in order to see the impact of one module. Uh, okay. Uh, one imp I mean, in order to see the overall impact on the system, not like uh, retesting the same uh, defect. So okay. re regression testing includes uh, basically uh, not the new uh, testing of new functionality, but the impact of the old functionality also. Okay. Fine. Uh, great, Sanket. You know, as for the theoretical, you know, the valid answer. But if you say again this answer in the interview, they will not be happy with that. Yeah, we'll prepare for that. that. <laughs> yes, I'll tell you that, you know. <laughs> what is the regression right. testing is nothing but, you know, see, I'll tell you in a very practical manner, just try to understand this concept. Sure. Okay. So, probably, you know, now I am recently started one project. Now, in my hand, I have a one release IR1. So, probably, you know, my release contains IR1 is my release name. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if you have any queries, you know, feel free to ask me. This is my release name is IR1. In this IR1 release, I have a, you know, 10 requirements. In my hand, I have a 10 requirements. Based on this 10 requirements, now, I have, you know, I developed 300 test cases. Based on the 10 requirement functionality, I designed 300 test cases in the positive and negative manner. Okay. Once the build is deployed into my environment, what I need to do, I need to execute these 300 test cases. Are you clear or not? Yeah. Right? I need to execute these 300 test cases. So, while executing the test cases, if I observe any, you know, gaps on the test case execution, probably I'm going to be logged the bus. I log in log the issues. Right? Yes. Log the issues. So, observe team here. For doing all these tasks, you know, in my hand, I have 30 working days. So, my testing estimation is 30 days. Mm -hmm. My testing estimation is 30 days. So, within the 30 days team, I need to understand the requirement functionality. Within the 30 days, I need to prepare the 300 test cases. There is no requirement functionality. It's not at all, you know, market with preparing the 300 test cases. Just, I am saying the number. Okay? So, within the 30 days, I need to understand the requirement functionality. Within 30 days, I need to prepare the test cases. Within 30 days, I need to execute the test cases. If I found any, you know, un misbehavior on the test case execution, probably I'm going to be locked the bug also. Right? This is what I'm going to do normally, usually in the testing, right? Mm -hmm. So probably, you know, we have a five or six resources. It might be possible. 